Demeter thundered out of the throne room. Thundering was actually Zeus's job, but she was beyond mad. She went back to Iulius, the one kingdom where people had helped her. She allowed the crops there to continue growing, but on the rest of the earth, everything withered and died just as she'd threatened. Zeus told himself, she's just throwing a tantrum. Give her a few days and she'll get over it. Weeks passed, then months. Humans starved by the thousands. And when humans starved, they couldn't make burnt offerings to the gods. They couldn't build new temples. All they could do was cry out in agony, praying to the gods 24-7. Help us! We're starving! Which gave Zeus a huge headache. Also, the gods were reduced to eating ambrosia and nectar, which got old quickly. Without grain, they couldn't have any bread or those awesome fish fresh baked brownies that Hera made sometimes. Finally, Zeus relented. He summoned a main messenger, a god named Hermes, and said, Hey, Hermes, go down to the underworld, tell Hades that he's got to send Persephone back right away, or we'll never have any peace, or brownies. On it, boss. Hermes zoomed down to the underworld. Meanwhile, Persephone had been in the palace of Hades the whole time, and she was learning the hard way that the world did not revolve around her. No matter how many times she stamped her feet, held her breath, or screamed for her mother, she could not get what she wanted. She threw some epic tantrums. She tore up the bed, which made it hard to sleep. She kicked the walls, which hurt her foot. And when Hades' ghostly servants brought her meals, she smashed the plates and refused to eat anything, even though she was starving. The not-eating thing was important. See. In Greek times, eating food in another person's house was like signing a contract. It meant you accepted your place as their guest. They had to treat you properly, but you also had to behave properly, because it meant that you and your host were on friendly terms. Persephone did not want to sign that contract, not at all. The first few days, she refused to leave her room. Hades did not force her to, though he tried to talk to her a few times. Look, he said. Your dad agreed to the marriage. I'm sorry for the whole kidnapping thing, which, by the way, was his idea. But honestly, I love you. You're amazing and beautiful, and I promise... Get out! She threw whatever she could grab, which happened to be a pillow. The pillow bounced off Hades' chest. Hades looked sad and left her alone. Around the fourth day, Persephone got bored and left her room. No one stopped her. She quickly realized why. Outside the king's palace, there was no place to go. She was stuck in the underworld, with nothing in any direction except gloomy gray plains filled with dead people, and no sky above except for dark mist. Even if she ran away from the palace, she didn't want to walk through those fields of dead souls, and she had no idea how to get back to the upper world. The most infuriating thing? Hades refused to get mad at her. No matter how many plates she smashed, or sheets she tore up, or how many horrible names she called him, though honestly she didn't know that many insults. She'd lived a happy, sheltered life, and calling Hades a stupid head didn't quite seem forceful enough. Hades took her abuse and told her that he was sorry that she was angry. I do love you, he promised. You are the brightest thing in the entire underworld. With you here, I will never miss the sunlight again. You are warmer than the sun by far. You're a stupid head, she screamed. After he left, she realized what he'd said was sort of sweet, but only in a creepy, pathetic way, of course. The days passed. The more Persephone wandered through the palace, the more amazed she became. The mansion was huge. Hades had entire rooms made of gold and silver. Every day his servants set out new bouquets of flowers made from precious jewels, and dozens of ruby roses on diamond stems, platinum and gold sunflowers with emerald-studded leaves. Even on Mount Olympus, Persephone had never seen such dazzling wealth. She started to realize that this creepy and horrible Hades had tremendous power. He controlled thousands of souls. He commanded horrifying monsters and creatures of the darkness. He had access to all the wealth under the earth, making him the richest god in the world. No matter what Persephone destroyed, he could instantly replace it with something even better. Still, she hated the place. Of course she did. She missed the sun and the meadows and the fresh flowers. The underworld was so clammy she could never get warm. The constant gloom gave her a serious case of seasonal affective disorder. 